Time to talk a little hardball. Elliot Johnson, my friend, Durham Bulls legend, former Brave, former Royal, former Ray. I don't think ever Devil Ray. Uh, and, of course, uh, a former a Guardians legend. Uh, before we get into Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, uh, umpiring and whatever else we get into here, uh, what ballpark do you think you had the most success in given at least 25 plate appearances? Toronto? You were very good. You know, you're excellent in Toronto, yes. Your batting yeah. average in Toronto at Rogers, uh, Rogers Stadium was, hold on, I want to see, get it, get it exactly, was 421, but you had less than 25 plate appearances. Only 24 oh. plate appearances uh, in Toronto. 421, OPS of uh, 1,005. Um, you were dynamite at Marlins Park, 417 hitter, uh, 145 OPS, 10 for 24 with a home run. You're also great at Camden Yards. Yeah, I like playing in Camden. It's a great ballpark. It's a dumb, yeah, there's what, only so yeah. See if you can name off the top of your head, Adam. How many road players, visiting players, have hit home runs from both sides of the of the plate in Camden? <laughs> uh, let's see. Road players to homer from both sides of the plate uh, at Camden Yards. Uh, I wonder if Eddie Murray ever did it with the Angels. Good question. I wonder. Uh, did Robbie Alomar ever do it with uh, either his time in Cleveland or Toronto? Great question. I don't know. Uh, but I'm one of the few, whoever it is. <laughs> uh, ballpark you struggled in? Uh, Oakland. Uh, yes. Yes. You, you're you're very good. Uh, but only 22 plate appearances, so it didn't. Uh, I couldn't put it on a list. Um, gotcha. You must have been miserable in Kansas City. Uh, Kansas City, another one, man. That that place plays so big, Adam. Um, and it's it was super cold. It <laughs> seemed like when we played there, uh, and they had, of course, they had a bunch of guys that threw a hundred in their bullpen, so that didn't really help either. So, all right, well, thank you very much. I uh, I enjoyed going down uh, the uh, Elliot Johnson page on BaseballReference.com. Still. Uh, one of my five favorite websites on earth. Shohei Otani, fastest player ever to get to 40 home runs and 40 stolen bases. We talked about Otani at the beginning of the season. I just asked you uh, if he's going to go to another level now as a hitter because he didn't have to pitch. Um, I don't know if he's going to another level as a hitter. He's probably really the same hitter. Uh, but do you think he can get 50-50? Um, yeah, he can, whether, I, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't see any reason why not, but I mean, one of the things about, uh, playing in LA versus playing in Atlanta, say, uh, Acuna, for whatever reason, doesn't get the same energy, we'll call it, for what he's done, uh -huh. with the home run, skull and base combination as Shohei's getting, you know, and I realize Shohei's a great player and he's a worldwide star and he's bringing so much, um, I guess, uh, uh, attention to the game because of it, and I respect it. But Acuna has been doing these things. Yep. Um, maybe not as quickly, of course, but uh, why Acuna doesn't get the same type of energy is kind of strange to me. But uh, yeah, it's it's still great for the game. I love what Shohei's doing. I hope he does go 50-50, and um, whatever uh, kind of attention he can generate as a result of that, I think is nothing but good news for the game. I think the reason, maybe at least one of the reasons why Acuna hasn't been getting the same level of attention, uh, yes, the, the global nature of Otani as a star certainly plays into it, but this is now second time in, what, four years where Ronald Acuna Jr. has uh, been out for the balance of the season with a major injury. So I just being out, of, being out of mind uh, matters, uh, but I mean, he's one of the best... I mean... He's on the short list of best players in baseball when he's healthy, isn't he? For sure. There's no question about it. He's dynamic in every way. And I, and I, unfortunately for him, I think the things that make him so special, the, the loose joints, call it, yeah. that give him so much flexibility and ability to really generate unbelievable torque and bat speed has, has been to his detriment when it comes to running the bases, unfortunately for him. So... I hope he can find a way to stay healthy. It's not as a result of him not being prepared. It's just they seem like freak opportunity, freak injuries that happen running to first or you know uh, trying to turn on a dime in a second.
Shohei Otani probably the MVP in the in, in the National League. I mean, I guess Marcel Ozuna has mm-hmm. comparable, not really the same, but you can uh, you can throw a blanket over him kind of uh, mm-hmm. offensive numbers. But Otani's the MVP, right? Probably right now. Kettle Marte's had a great year. Harper's had a great year. Lindor is turning turning it yeah. on right now. He Holy is. cow! Yep. Um, so, I mean, it, there, there's a couple of folks there. I know Zuna isn't good for the game. They're not going to give it to him, of course. Um, <laughs> so they're, they're going to try and quietly say, nice season. Yes. But, um, it, probably going to be Shohei is the way that it looks right now. I do feel, I find it somewhat uh, enlightening in, in some ways that uh, a year or so ago, Braves fans could not wait to ship him out of town. And now they're like, where would we be without him? Uh, but that's, uh, I mean, that's just nature of the beast in professional sports. We look the other way. Uh, I'll just point to Tyreek Hill. Uh, there are there are places that remember that Tyreek Hill's not necessarily a good guy, uh, and uh, and but but they love him in Miami right now. Uh, Aaron Judge has a cartoon OPS of a thousand one ninety seven, fifty fifty one home runs. With a month left, sum that up. Uh, he's unbelievable. Uh, watching the games, was it you know over the weekend, whatever it was, he's getting some home runs to right field that are cans of corn. Sure, it, in City Pete, in Kansas City, yep. in Oakland, whatever it is, um, and nobody really cares. So, like you, you know, I don't want to call them cheap home runs. Uh, that, you know, he's what six eight you know, 280, whatever he is, <laughs> and he's doing what he should be doing. He's taking full advantage. What yep. you think about is Babe Ruth and Maris and, and Mantle, you know, hitting the ball to the short porch to right field. He's inside outing stuff and hitting it to the short porch. It's it's fantastic. Absolutely love what he's doing. Now, the, the ones he's hitting to center field and left center are not cheap in any way, shape, or form. But he's got a lot of uh, fence scrapers that are going to right field. And credit to him for having the approach to take those balls. And inside out of him, I mean, one of them was a two-seamer running in at, like, 96 that he fisted for, you know, a 370-foot home run, which is an out in most places. But to his credit, he's using the home field advantage, um, you know, and not to be disrespectful to the 51 home runs, the majority of them are not that way, but right. he's getting a lot of them where he's taking advantage of New York. Um, I'll say Soto is hitting some balls way out. Yeah. Um, and he's not too far away OPS wise. He's over a thousand. Yes, and he is. Bobby Witt is having an outstanding season in Kansas City. Um, he's got a lot more ABs because he doesn't walk as much as Aaron Judge. But holy cow, is he having a great year? You know, it's interesting. Um, yeah, Judge Judge does have uh, you know his fair share of balls that would be flyouts, fly you know F F nines in almost every other ballpark in the big leagues. Uh, I don't know how many he's lost to left center because that's really the uh, the the long part of the uh, of the field at Yankee Stadium. At least traditionally, it's been. But um, it it doesn't take away from like even if you turn those ten, let, let's say it's ten, if you, and you turn them all into outs, he's still <laughs> he's still making a mockery of. Uh, I mean, it's really throwback statistical data. Um, he's about to get his. Well, he already has his third fifty-plus home run season. See, uh, do you know how many Babe Ruth had fifty or more home runs in a season? Uh, I'm going to say ten. Four. Are you kidding me? Four. Mark Man. McGuire and Sammy Sosa also had four. Wow. F- fifty or more home runs in a season. Barry Bonds had just one. What? Just the year he had seventy two? Just one. This yep. seventy three? Yeah, that's it. That was the only year he did not go he did not crack fifty in any other season unless I uh glanced over one uh at baseballreference.com. But yes, Babe Ruth had four uh in uh, in his career. Of course, uh we don't Aaron Judge didn't pitch. Uh, that's another wow. story altogether. All right, but uh, isn't, it, isn't it so great for the game, though, Adam? Awesome. You, know, you get to be able to be mentioned in these things, and he's an, a wonderful human being. Watching him run around the bases all the time and smile and tell his teammates, hey, we don't do that here. Yep. Like, I, I mean, he's an absolute wonderful person for the game. 
And the way he held out with those contract negotiations just makes it even better that the Yankees had to shell out more money to keep him there. I'm yeah. so happy for the guy. And they're going to have to shell out a lot of money to keep Juan Soto. I don't know if they're going to do it. Okay. They might. Um, the Yankees certainly can afford it. But, I mean, I know they're going to have a lot of competition uh, right in their own backyard for mm-hmm. uh, for Juan Soto. You mentioned Francisco Lindor earlier. We're talking with Elliot Johnson about baseball here. Um, he's had an amazing, he's had almost a Francisco Lindor MVP-ish uh, type season for the Mets. Not quite up to the uh, the level that he used to have, but he's probably hitting for more power now than he did then. Um, and I don't know if, if I were the Mets that I wouldn't explore taking advantage of that in a move uh, and just kind of resetting some of the deck. I, I don't know if they're going to re-sign uh, Pete Alonzo in the offseason, but I said I would move him at the deadline. Uh, they chose not to, and they're falling out. Although they beat the Diamondbacks uh, last night, they're kind of falling out of the race for the wild card. All right, final thing for Elliot Johnson. Uh, I have been turned on to Umpire Scorecard on Twitter, and I you know you use Umpire Auditor, um, mm-hmm. and this gives you the home plate data for every game and every umpire and i swear i keep seeing the same umpires at sub 90 percent accuracy uh, and yet they keep getting assignments behind the plate why can't major league baseball take the top 40 home plate umpires you are the you guys always work the plate or every other game, put two of them on every crew, and they work the plate. Why do we have to have bad home plate umpires umpiring home plate because it's game changing? Okay, so if you, if you look at let's just call it league average is two fifty. Okay, it's mm-hmm. somewhere in that range. Uh, average correct rate in the big leagues is ninety two percent. Okay. So if I'm a baseball player and I am not average, they're looking for somebody to replace me. Why they don't have a opportunity to have umpires who are better and just be purely merit-based, I just don't understand, Adam. I really don't. I, I don't know what it is with the union and the agreement with MLB. It needs to be completely ripped up and just torn apart. Um, you know, if they're trying to claim that it's a supply issue and there's not enough good umpires, that's a conversation worth having. I'm willing to hear that out. Uh, but I don't see why we can't have these systems in place to be able to track umpires in the minor leagues, just like baseball players. Very simple. And if, make sure the talented, most talented guys are there and or just keep the good ones behind the dish and not ever have the bad ones rotate to right. behind the plate. I mean, this, this isn't rocket science. We can keep this really simple. So having the best guys back there, uh, whether it's David Rackley or whomever it is, it doesn't matter. Their names are actually, you know, somewhat irrelevant. And or if you want to pay them based on how good they are, I feel like you're incentivizing them to get better at yeah. balls and strikes. Otherwise, you're just basically creating a system of they're never held accountable. They can always go off the rails. They don't have to follow the rules. They can craft them to that day how they feel, and that's not the way the game should be. The, the best games you go to, the umpires, you don't even know they're there, Okay. And if we can create a system where that is more of a function or an expectation, I think we should do it. The, the reason why it is the way it is, I don't think it needs to stay that way. I think that we can come up with a way to make sure the best are compensated appropriately. And uh, it makes the product so much better because you're less worried about having those guys back there, the Angel Hernandez's of the world, <laughs> who are going to continually just ruin the, the experience. Yeah. Where the game becomes more about that guy than it does about the players, and it should be about the players and the individual teams that we're watching. I, I It just seems like it's such a simple fix, and I am not a fan of automated strike zones. I simply am not. Uh, I, I do think that in so many ways, pitching is an art form, and it, it removes the art from the art form and sometimes fooling the umpire is just as smart as fooling the batter uh not that i want to see a steady diet of that but i don't want to see it eliminated and the guys that get up right 94 or more percent of the time we should only be using them maybe maybe my uh, art form it, it you know sits uh, doesn't sit well with some people, but I'm not I'm not sure I really care. 
Uh, I remember the best of Greg Maddox and Pedro Martinez uh, and Tom Glavin, who kept pushing the strike zone further and further off the plate and getting it because, well, I just got that last one. Maybe I can go another inch further off the plate and see if I can get that one. Uh, I just don't want to eliminate that from the game, but I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, maybe I'm crazy. Well, no, I, I, I'm in the same camp, Adam. So I think if, if the umpire that's behind the dish every single night, okay, there's 15, 15 games that are being played at any given time, right? So if we had 15 guys that stayed behind the plate and that's all they did night in, night out, and we don't care, if, you know, so Vic Carapazza is a guy that's back there. If he's one of the best, one of the top 15 best, he stays there. And if he doesn't, he moves away. And there's a compensation schedule for being the best. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever. And they don't even need to disclose it to us. Who cares? As long as the best product is back there that makes the outcome or the product on the field better, I think that's what we should do. And I, I don't think we need to overcomplicate this at all. Elliot Johnson, this is why you're uh, you're my friend. I appreciate your time, my man. Uh, I'm. Uh, if we could get you in Toronto in May, batting seventh, did I spend too much time on your baseball reference page? Yes, I did. Uh, Elliot Johnson, thank you so much, man. Thanks, Adam.